Yeah. So that's all said. Yeah. Like yeah. Only 1.2 Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the space of private credit. So Kapil, we were discussing what this product brings to the table. But uh, the risk assessment part of it, because you're solving for a particular purpose and the company needs a short-term finance for a particular cause. How is the risk assessment done uh, given that the interest rates on this are also on the higher side? So the way um, we think about risk, Nisha, is that there are three or four categories as Amit elaborated on private credit itself. Right. Private credit is not one composite category. Hmm. So performing credit, the risk management is slightly different. Yes. On distress, the risk management is very different. Hmm. Venture debt is extremely different. Yes. So I don't think we'll have time enough to discuss uh, risk assessment in all of them. Yes. But what I can do is I can talk about the performing credit risk assessment and the way we think about this category. The basic the, principles. The and basic things. principle in India is there is two lacunas or two shortcomings of India today. Hmm. And the sooner the fund manager recognizes those two shortcomings. Right. Number one shortcoming is legal systems are evolving. Yes. IBC has been set in place, but it yes. has miles to go before it will have a real teeth. Yes. So if you understand this, that collateral enforcement works, but works only in certain situations. Yes. Then you will build a portfolio in a certain way. Hmm. Hmm. Number one. Second is governance standards, reporting, accounting, hmm. related party transactions, middle market eco landscape. How is that evolving? It hmm. is again improving as we go along. Hmm. But is it at the right top-notch standards as you would find in a developed world? It's hmm. not there. Hmm. If these two lacunas are recognized, hmm. then you start to build the risk management strategy for Indian private credit, performing credit in a very simple way. Hmm. The way, at least at True North, we think about uh, risk management is, risk management happens at two levels. Hmm. One is individual deal picking. Hmm. Second is, what are you creating the construction, constructing the portfolio for your investor? All right, so this, you, you've talked about investment. What about exit opportunities and recovery? So, part so I'm well? saying when you talk about a deal, yes. deal has choosing the right company, hmm. choosing the right structure, choosing the right exit strategy, hmm. building a covenant and a collateral structure around it, hmm. which most people do, all of us do as an industry. Hmm. But obviously at some point in time, you could go wrong. Right. It's a 16, 17% product. It's a 14 to 16 to 18% product. Hmm. What are your risk mitigants? Hmm. The way we think about risk mitigant is obviously you do the work, which is what I call as plan A. Good company, good promoter. Yes, yes. Then you build a second layer of protection by saying that I will amortize quickly. I'll keep the tenor short, collect coupons. Yes. Reduce my exposure during the tenor. Right. Third is collateral. Yes. So this happens at the deal level. Collateral, governance, protection. Yes, yes. yes. Like After any this, lending. Yeah. yeah, like any other lending. Yes. What people forget at some point of time is these are high cost borrowing. Things can go wrong. These are middle market landscape. Yes. Keep the position size small. Yes. Keep it under five to seven. Do more deals. Do shorter tenor deals. Create a portfolio which is a very Diversify. different characteristic Diversification when it comes to a... But, and, and not concentrating but on this one strategy, can be one. Nisha, yeah. this strategy is not replicatable to a distressed desk, it's not replicable to other classes of strategy. And it could be variant to yes. Amit thinking, it could be variant to the way Piyush thinks. This is how we think in uh, performing so, But I think I would like to add, when you, since you said about exit, I think what has been heartening in India yeah. is that private credit space has seen significant exits. Yes. All the people here who are sitting have seen good exits in the portfolio. Yes. I can give out our numbers broadly. We invested 21,000 crores over the last five years. Yes. And our cash realizations are more than 23,000 crores. Hmm. So I think what IBC has done has hmm. brought in about a credit culture yes. where the promoters do not want to lose their companies. Yes. And that is also fanning some amount of interest from the offshore investors yes. into the country. Because prior to five years, Today, private credit deploys, in my view, anywhere between 30 to 35,000 crore annually. Hmm. This number was not even 3,000 crore hmm. uh, six, seven years back on an annual basis. So uh, I think we have come a long way yes. and we have a uh, way to go. Yes. But I think we are on the right path. That's All what right. I think. Th that's right. So, Piyusha, you know, of course, you can comment on this aspect as well. But I want to understand being an AIF product uh, under SEBI's regulation, AIFs have also gone through their whole, uh, you know, evolution of regulatory changes. How are we stacked up now? And how have changes really impacted uh, the course of this particular space? So, look, on the <coughs> regulatory side, I would say we are still evolving. Um, it is still, uh, the AIF industry in India is still in formative years compared to what it is in the developed markets. Yes. Um, and I think over the last, particularly last 15 months or so, there's a lot of wood that the regulators have been chopping in terms of putting in a very comprehensive mm. 
framework, a lot of housekeeping issues being fixed, etc., to ultimately lay a strong foundation mm. um, for you know this asset class to really you know uh, grow. Mm. Um, so I think, be it compliance obligations, related party uh, transactions, uh, certification of an investment team. Mm. Uh, dematerialization of units, valuation, you know, there are various areas in which yes. SEBI has been coming out with a lot of regulatory fine tuning. Yes. And which is all in the direction of, uh, you know, making it more robust framework. Right. Having said that, I think there are some areas where, uh, you know, uh, it's under regulatory consideration, and I right. think uh, in the months to come, we expect clarity and that would definitely be the new enablers. All right. So so regulations are still evolving. That's one thing to watch out but for. Nisha, Finally, know, 30 seconds, yeah. uh, Kapil. How do you see uh, this uh, now growing and also lessons from the past because some of the investors have burned their fingers in the past and there are several so lessons. First thing we must understand, Nisha, is that the crop of current asset management uh, managers which are there today are yes. all coming out of very good pedigree, track record. Yes. They are not sitting in levered vehicles. They don't yes. have compulsions. Yes. Their carry compensation is aligned to the outcomes yes. of the fund. Yes. It's a very different ecosystem yes. than compared to what happened in the past. Right. Nisha, people don't understand this. What happened in the past happened in the books of a levered and a rated NBFC where compulsions are, yeah. compulsions are doing a certain things are very different. Yes. Tell me one credit fund which has gone wrong, other than the real estate as a category, hmm. which has gone wrong, which was in the AI format. Right. So there's a lot of mis I take your point mis over there. Uh, alignment happening. Yes. Because what went wrong was in an NBFC format, which was levered, rated, and regulated. As long as we learn uh, from, uh, from a lot the past. Of lessons but have it's been a learned. differentiated product. <clears throat> and uh, uh, one of uh, the key aspects in lending for the growth capital uh, for the companies so, and is set to grow. And therefore, the demand coming in and also the investor interest and coming in. By the way, it's an yes. other important figure from the regulatory uh, aspect. He covered everything. There were eight consulting papers that came out from February to Ma uh, May. Yes. Eight consulting papers by SEBI. Right. So SEBI is an award drive, and all of us, we are very happy with the way regulations are shaping up. All right. So it's not, we have miles to go. We have already covered a lot of ground as far as regulations. All right. So important. the space evolving, and it's getting bigger, and it's, and it's important getting regulated. To keep, 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 keep an eye on it. Yeah, Thank you so much, Kapil Amit, as well as Piyush, Thank you. for this Thank very you. interesting discussion. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Big Deal. Keep it with CNBC TV 18.